It is now time for question period. The Leader of Her Majesty's Royal Opposition. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Premier, can you tell us exactly what the budget leaking team is? Mr. Mr. Speaker, well, I know that the Minister of Finance is going to want to speak to, uh, to the budget. What I will say, Mr. Speaker, is that as, uh, as in previous years under many governments, Mr. Speaker, there is always a plan to uh, foreshadow the budget. We will be bringing forward a budget, and we will be bringing forward a budget that will invest in people, Mr. Speaker. It will invest in infrastructure, and it will invest in supports for businesses in this province, Mr. Speaker. We've been clear about that. All along, we remain committed to making those investments, Mr. Speaker, and I'm not surprised that the uh, Leader of the Opposition might take issue with that strategy because he actually does want, not want to invest in the province, Mr. That's Speaker. Right. He thinks that cutting programs and undercutting uh, business and individuals is the way to go. We don't believe that, Mr. Speaker. We believe investing in people is the way to go. Here, here. You know, I um, don't think I got an answer from the Premier in very simple question. So there, there is no listing in the Ontario Civil Service of something called the budget leaking team. We understand this is a, a secret team that you've put together. So I'll ask you again, if you just answer a very simple question on behalf of taxpayers, can you describe exactly uh, what the budget leaking team is, who sits on it, and what's the purpose? So, Mr. Speaker, what I what I will say to the Leader of the Opposition and to the people of Ontario is that we are preparing a budget. We will yes, be making announcements, Mr. Speaker, in advance of the budget, as is the practice of government after government, Mr. Yes. Speaker. We will be making investments in the people of Ontario. We will be making investments in infrastructure, and we will be making, Mr. Speaker, investments in a business environment that will allow Order. the economy to thrive, Mr. Speaker. That that is what I have said all along. That is what I have said about our budget. That is what will be in our budget. And do we have a communications plan, Mr. Speaker? I've asked, the, uh, I've asked for order, and now I'll ask individuals. The member from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke will come to order. The member from Dufferin, Caledon will come to order. Carry on. Do we have a communications plan? Absolutely, Mr. Speaker, and I'm sure that the I'm sure that the Conservatives and the NDP Answer. have communications plan, Mr. Speaker. It's unfortunate. The Minister it's unfortunate of Rural Affairs that those will come to order. plans may have been released, Mr. Speaker, but the substance Thank is you. exactly what I have said we are going to do. Thank you final supplementary. Um, you know, again, I asked a very simple question. The Premier, for some reason. Uh, is not telling us exactly if the budget leaking team exists or not. Um, until now, it had been kept secret. Uh, we did hear from whistleblowers uh, within the civil servants who are very concerned that you are now drafting Ontario public servants to do the work of the Ontario Liberal Party. It's not their job. They have a job to do, but it's not to be Liberal Party staffers. So, Premier, let's be clear about this. And, um, I fully expect that you are aware of what's happening in your own office. You would have been briefed on this if not come up with the idea yourself. So can you please tell me, the budget leaking team, secret until today, is it staffed by political staff Question. or is it staffed by bureaucrats? Mr. Speaker, we are putting together a budget. We are putting together and have a communications plan, Mr. Speaker. We are going to be investing in people in this province. We are going to be investing in infrastructure, and we are going to be working to partner with business, Mr. Speaker, to make sure that they can Senator create business. Lampton, Ken create, Ken create jobs. I was at a business this morning in uh, North Etobicoke uh, with uh, uh, MPP Shafiq Qadri, and we made an announcement about investing in Club Coffee, Mr. Speaker. We're putting five million dollars into that company so that they can expand, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, so that they can create more jobs and that they can export around North America and around the world, Mr. Speaker. It has everything to do with the budget because the budget is about investing in the economy of the province. That's what we're doing, Mr. Speaker. Be seated, please. Be seated. New question. The Leader of the Opposition. You know, Speaker, I'll try again the Premier who seems to be avoiding answering my very direct and simple questions, and I'm confused as to why she won't confirm or deny that this uh, secret budgeting leaking team exists, nor will she confirm or deny that she has drafted civil servants 
uh, to do the work of the Ontario Liberal Party. Look, we fully expect Liberal Party staffers to figure out communications, but we do not expect you to draft public servants to do the work. Minister of Energy, come to order. And this shows me further, Speaker, a, a Premier who is more concerned about protecting her own job. Minister, call, training jobs. college universities come to order. You, you, you seem to be oblivious, or you claim to be oblivious to what's happening within your own government, your own office, from the OPP investigation of potential criminal activity and destruction of documents, now to this budget leaking team. So I'll ask you one more time. This is try number four. Can you confirm Question? that the secret budget leaking team exists? And if so, is it staffed by bureaucrats or Liberal parties? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. Well, I would just say to the uh, leader of the third party, the jobs that I'm protecting and the jobs that we're working to create are jobs for the people of Ontario, Mr. Speaker. We're making investments in order, in order that we can have an economy that's thriving, Mr. Speaker. So, are we preparing a budget? Absolutely. Are finance officials engaged in preparing that budget? Absolutely. I think the people of Ontario would be shocked if I said no, the, the Ministry of Finance officials are not involved in preparing a budget. Do we have a communications plan? Absolutely, Mr. Speaker. The member from the PM Carleton will come to order and the member from Prince Edward Hastings will come to order. Carry on. Very much, Mr. Speaker, and we will deliver on that commitment to bring forward a budget that will invest in the people of this province, that will invest in infrastructure, yes, and will support a business climate that will attract jobs to the province, Mr. Speaker. That is what the substance of our budget will be, Mr. Thank Speaker. You. I'm going to send over to the Premier a list of um, people on the budget leaking team. Uh, this information was given to us by civil servants from the total from north come to order. who are concerned that you're abusing your power as Premier to put Liberal Party interests at the interest of the taxpayers or the civil service. Well, they'd be right. I asked you four times, Premier, if this group existed. You refused to answer. I, I don't know why you're being so extraordinarily evasive when it comes to very basic questions here today. Or are you trying to hide? I'll ask for the pages to bring this over to the Premier. And can the Premier confirm that Matthew Sylvain, Kyle McIntyre, Stephen Donnelly and others on this list are paid Liberal staff, or is it, as we fear from the whistleblowers, civil servants that you're drafting to do the work of the Liberal Party? Question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. So I will say again to the Leader of the Opposition, yes, we are preparing a budget. I believe that that is absolutely our responsibility, to prepare a budget, to work with the officials in finance, Mr. Speaker, and of course, they are, they are working to prepare that budget, Mr. Speaker. Do we have a communications plan? Absolutely, we have a communications plan. I think, Mr. Speaker, that what the Leader of the Opposition is really concerned about is that he doesn't support the investments that we're putting forward. He the uh, Minister of Community States, uh, the Minister of Community Social Services, come to order, and for the third time, the member from Renfrew and Ipsen, sorry, second time, yeah. Uh, and because you're counting, you only have one left. surprising to me that the leader of the third party would be somewhat exercised about investments in the province Answer. because it's not what he supports. He opposes making investments. He opposes supporting business. He opposes supporting the talent and skills of this province, Mr. Speaker. So I don't expect him to agree with us, but I do Thank expect you. him to understand that we're going to bring that budget Thank forward, you. Mr. Speaker. Final supplementary. <clears throat> you know, we, we on this side are certainly appreciate the Premier showed up for question period today. I just wish we had some answers to the paper on some very basic questions. Um, so you, you've, you've had the list uh, to study. This looks to me like the Liberal Party that, once again, is more concerned about keeping their government limousines, their cabinet minister titles, and spending whatever it takes to keep your jobs. I'm more concerned about creating good jobs with better take home pay for all Ontarians. That's, that's my plan. So uh, I guess this is my last chance. We'll, we'll continue to ask this, Premier. Can, can you confirm or deny the existence of the hitherto secret budget leaking team? And can you tell me also that your plan is to make 39 different spending announcements totaling $5.7 billion in the next 21 days? That's the information we've had from the whistleblowers. And, and if that's the case, where are you going to find the money? Thank you. 
Premier. Minister of Finance. The, uh, first of all, I know how to do that, and you're wasting your own time. I called for you to do it, and I don't want the responses either. Just adding impact, Mr. Speaker. Right? I just want him to listen very carefully, and this is what is happening, and this is what I can confirm. Member from Dufferin We County. on this side of the House are preparing a budget, a very forward-thinking plan, one that will be released in the coming weeks here in this very House, one that is being used and worked on with a number of officials from the ministry, including members of our political staff, one that includes a rollout of, of a comms team that I am very proud of. And the people of Ontario will be very Answer. proud of this budget as well because it speaks to the needs of that community. And it talks about investing in our people. It talks about being very strategic in our investments of infrastructure and creating jobs. Thank and it talks about maintaining a very dynamic Thank business you. climate. Mr. Speaker, please. No question, the leader of the third party. Uh, thank you, Speaker. decide to stop the last people. Leader of the third party. Thanks, Speaker. It's nice to be missed. Uh, I want to thank the Premier for showing up to Queen's Park today as well, to question period. There's some important questions that the people of this province deserve answers to, Speaker, and the buck stops with the Premier when it comes to answering them. What services was Peter Face uh, supplying to the Liberal Party uh, in the last uh, week? Well, Mr. Speaker, let me let me first say that I know that the uh, leader of the third party, who uh, puts herself forward as a champion of the North, will understand that it was very important that I meet with uh, the businesses that I met with yesterday in Sault Ste. Marie. That she. The member from Prince Edward Hastings, come to order, second time. Carry on. She will know that it was very important uh, for me to meet with the folks at Algoma University, Mr. Speaker, to talk about the expansion to their athletic complex, Mr. Speaker. She will know that it was very important for me to visit with the students at uh, Francis Clegg School, Mr. Speaker. So she would know, because she does put herself forward as a champion of the North, Mr. Speaker, that it is not appropriate to make plans weeks in advance and then cancel them, Mr. Speaker. So I was I was very pleased to have been able to be in Sault Ste. Marie, Mr. Speaker, and I'm happy to answer her uh, other questions in the supplementary. supplementary. Well, Speaker, a Premier who preaches accountability should know that that takes showing up in the Legislature to answer questions of the opposition. Mr. Face, Mr. Face services were abruptly terminated over the weekend, Speaker. If he was merely providing routine services, as the Liberals insist, why was his contract terminated? Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I worked all day yesterday until midnight, and I did not. I have never walked out of this legislature. So, yeah. so <laughs> never have, never will. So, let me just say, let me just say that we learned. We learned the allegations on Thursday about the former yeah. chief of staff of the former premier's office in the former premier's office, Mr. Speaker. Uh, following these uh, revelations, we uh, we put in place an internal investigation. We conducted that. It was determined that the company previously did occasional IT services. Uh, in the caucus office under the former premier, and and in the party office, and that was until that was until January 2013, and then those uh, those uh, IT services only Question, continued uh, with the party, Mr. Speaker, uh, until we discovered, and those uh, on Sunday, those services were terminated. Thank you. 
Final supplementary. Speaker, Mr. Face has worked closely with the Liberal Party and the Liberal Caucus for some time, as the uh, Premier has indicated. Yet this internal Liberal Party investigation of his services uh, brought about his immediate termination. What exactly was found in that investigation is what I would like to know from the Premier. Speaker. Well, Mr. Speaker, what I said was that uh, this IT company did some work uh, with the caucus's services, Mr. Speaker, before I was in this office. Until January 2013, I was not in this office until February 11th. There was a continuation. There was some work that was done by the Liberal for the Liberal Party uh, until we did our internal investigation after the allegations came forward on Thursday. As of Sunday, those services were terminated, Mr. Speaker, and so that is that is the decision that we made on Sunday, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. New question, the leader of the third party. Thank you, Speaker. My next question is also for the Premier. For more than the for more than a year, people in the Premier's office have known that the partner of a Liberal staffer came into their office to wipe their computers. At least that's what they told OPP investigators. But for a year, the Premier and her staff never came forward, never shared these facts with the public, and now we learn the same individual was working for the Liberal Party even while this Premier insisted she didn't know him. Yet now they expect us to take the Liberal Party at their word when they say there's nothing more to see. Does the Premier think that saying, I know nothing about this, is good enough? Well, let's Let's just be clear, Mr. Speaker. I learned of the allegations on Thursday, and the allegations are against the former Chief of Staff of the former Premier, Mr. Speaker. It has nothing to do with the staff member who is being mentioned by the leader of the third party. Nonetheless, Mr. Speaker, uh, we are in this process. There is a, a police investigation going on. They are doing their work. We need to let that we need to let that work unfold, Mr. Speaker. And I have said quite clearly, I am happy to debate and have been for the last year answering questions about the relocation of the gas plants, Mr. Speaker. I have appeared before a committee. We have opened up the process, and that is appropriate debate, Mr. Speaker. Exactly. The allegations that the uh, that the leader of the third party is, uh, is commenting on, Mr. Speaker, those are part of a process that the police are undertaking right now. Thank you. Speaker, on Friday, I wrote to the Premier, making it plain that it's time for a public inquiry into the gas plant scandal and the cover-up. I have yet to receive a response from this Premier. Will the Premier finally call the public inquiry? Good question. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to ask the, the leader of the third party to, to withdraw. Withdraw, Speaker. Premier. Premier. Well, we actually had this conversation uh, a year ago, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I said that we were going to open up the process. We've done exactly yeah. that. The committee has seen tens of thousands of uh, documents, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. I think hundreds of thousands of documents have had witnesses. I have appeared before the committee twice, and Mr. Speaker, my understanding is that the committee is still calling uh, is still calling witnesses. The uh, the fact is there's a, an investigation that's ongoing. We need to let that unfold, Mr. Speaker. And I think that you know. The reality is the only reason we're having this discussion is because we did open up the process, yeah, Mr. Speaker. Wrong. We opened up the process. We made it clear that we were going to provide any of the information that was relevant. We have done that. We will continue to do that, Mr. Thank Speaker. Thank you. Final supplementary. Speaker, the only reason we're where we are now is because we have a minority parliament and this government has been forced to answer the question. that are stuck paying the bill, Speaker. The Premier's story is pretty hard to believe. The Liberals keep insisting that there is the nothing more Bruce to see Green here, folks. Sound, come to order. That's just not good enough. The Premier leads a Liberal Party that wasted over a billion dollars and now has key political staff under criminal investigation by the OPP anti-racket anti squad. If the Premier is actually interested in getting the facts out, why won't she allow for a completely independent, truly unbiased public inquiry? Well, Mr. Speaker, I would put the OPP in the unbiased category, Mr. Speaker, and they are doing their work. And Mr. Speaker, I have said 
repeatedly, and I have taken responsibility, and I have said that there were mistakes made and there were things done that should not have been done and there were decisions made that should not have been made, and I have said that we needed new rules, and we're putting those new rules in place, Mr. Speaker. We have new rules about document retention. We have training that has taken place with all staff, Mr. Speaker. We have work. The Minister of Energy is putting new rules in place in terms of citing energy infrastructure, Mr. Speaker. We have made changes over the last year as a result of this discussion. That has nothing to do with being in a minority parliament. That has to do with the integrity of this government and our understanding of what needs to happen in order to make decisions properly in the future, Mr. Speaker. New question. The member from Nipissing. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Good morning, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Premier, our leader, Tim Hudak, has presented you with evidence of your secret budget leaking team, codenamed BLT. It's reminiscent of the existence of code names during the gas plant scandal with titles like Project Vapor and Project Apple. The BLT's purpose is to leverage the size and scope of the Ontario civil servant towards the goal of, of doing pre-election campaign work of the Liberal Party. The plan is to have taxpayer-paid employees leak out 39 budget plan details over the next month. This is the same self-interested behaviour we saw when the Liberals blew $1 billion to cancel two gas plants to save five seats against the advice of their own advisers and the civil servants. When will you end the practice of putting the Liberal Party ahead of the people of Ontario? Thank you. Premier? Mr. Speaker, let's be clear to all those that are listening and watching. Let's be clear to all Ontarians. This is not about the fortunes of any political party who are doing political gimmicks and playing cheap tricks to try to get and play at the lowest level of politics, Mr. Speaker. It's it is untoward what they are doing. This is not about the fortunes of that political party there or any. It's about the fortunes of Ontarians, Mr. Speaker. We are going to deliver a budget. It's in progress. Now that you've finished, the member from Lambton, Ken Middlesex, will come to order a second time. Carry on. Mr. Speaker, the budget is in progress. Nothing has yet been finalized. We want everyone to know that the budget will be presented right here in this very house, in the house for the people of Ontario, Answer. and we have asked people of Ontario for their submissions. All of us have been working on this together, Mr. Speaker. The opposition have Thank decided you. not to. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Speaker. I must say, Premier, I think the lowest level is co-opting taxpayer employees to disclose your secret BLT. That's the lowest level. This BLT confirms the fact that the Liberals are withholding the 2014 budget from the public and from the credit rating agencies to use it as a political tool to help in their re-election bid. Even more damning, the Liberals' budget leaking team also oversees the use of taxpayer dollars to advertise and promote these new Liberal initiatives. Basically, the Liberal Party has co-opted tax-paid Ontario government employees to run its election campaign for the next month. Premier, those safe hands you keep talking about are found to be digging into taxpayers' pockets yet again to get you re-elected. What's so safe about that? Thank you. Minister of Finance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member opposite repeatedly asks for transparency and more information. The member opposite wants us to come forward with our long-term plan, which is coming in the coming week. The member opposite wants that budget presented in this House. The member opposite wants it to be audited and wants the integrity of those numbers to be confirmed, which they are. In fact, Mr. Speaker, Ontario and the government of Ontario was rated the top in, in the nation for integrity of our numbers and the disclosure of what we are doing, Mr. Speaker. We'll continue to do that. We'll continue to work with all of our stakeholders, We're, and I am very proud, Mr. Speaker, of the staff at the Ministry of Finance and the work that that team has done alongside myself and others to present a budget that is wholesome and, yes, very aspirational because it is long-term in its view. They choose not to do that, Mr. Speaker. They choose gutter politics. They choose to smear the very individuals that are working on behalf of the public service for the benefit of others. Any questions?
The member from Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. My question to the Premier. Will the Premier say right now that she thinks Peter Face should come to the Justice Committee and answer questions? Uh, government House Leader. Government House Leader. Sure. Mr. Speaker, I uh, appreciate your all. I think all, all members realize this is a very serious situation. The Justice Committee is looking into the matter. There's a process in place in which they uh, uh, can come forward with witness lists and uh, call those witnesses forward. And I think we should uh, allow the committee to uh, undertake uh, uh, the work that's set out and to determine which witnesses it wishes to call and undertake that process. Thank you. Supplementary. Well, I didn't see that coming. Uh, again, Speaker, to the Premier, as we heard in committee this morning, we're having a hard time I'm reaching Mr. Face. Are the Liberals prepared to use the information they have to help us locate him? Or better yet, does the Premier know where he is? Mr. Speaker, I would, I would point out that when it comes to members of the government, including the Premier, including the Minister of Energy, including myself, Mr. Speaker, we have made ourselves available to the committee. In terms of uh, uh, other witnesses, Mr. Speaker, it's up to the committee to decide what that list is and to uh, pursue the matter as it sees fit. There are uh, processes that are in place, Mr. Speaker. I know, speaking on our side of the legislature, we were very, very disappointed, Mr. Speaker. And we wanted the Conservative candidates in the election, those same ones who made claims that the only way to have these gas plants cancelled was to elect them, Mr. Speaker. We wanted them to come before the committee and talk about their financial analysis, about the policy work that was done, Mr. Speaker. And uh, they, in fact, didn't yes, appear in front of the committee. But, Mr. Speaker, as far as this government is concerned, we have cooperated for, uh, fully with the committee in terms of witnesses and the Thank documents you. that have been requested. Thank you. New question. The member from Mr. Sargent. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Northern Development and Mines. Speaker, as a member from Mississauga East Cooksville, I cannot forget, and my constituents cannot forget, that our community is on the traditional lands of the Mississauga First Nations. And that is why I'm proud of our government's strong record and our Premier's strong record on consulting and working with numerous Aboriginal communities across Ontario. By creating the Ministry of Aboriginal Affairs in 2007, we are continually strengthening these important partnerships. I hear that ministers say in the House that Ontario is taking action to drive smart, sustainable and collaborative de developments in the ring of fire. Mr. Speaker, can the Minister of Northern Question. Development and Mines please educate the House on, and, on how Ontario is ensuring a collaborative approach to ring of fire development with our Aboriginal partners? Minister of Northern Development and Mines. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I have particular thanks to the member for asking that question. And the, the timing, may I say, is impeccable. Our commitment to a collaborative approach was, uh, was demonstrated very clearly uh, just this past uh, Wednesday when I had the privilege of, of signing uh, on behalf of the uh, province a landmark agreement with the nine Matawa First Nation chiefs. Um, with, and, and what's so important is that will ensure that the Matawa First Nations really benefit from the Ring of Fire development. This regional framework are? agreement uh, is an absolutely vital step in a historic community-based uh, negotiation process. And it really does ensure that First Nations and Ontario will work together to advance the Ring of Fire opportunities. And the, agree the agreement lays the framework for regional long-term environmental monitoring, Answer. enhanced participation in environmental assessment process, resource revenue sharing, a number of important factors, a tremendous day, a great opportunity. We're looking forward to moving forward at the Ring of Fire. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the Minister for the update. This collaborative approach is truly impressive, and it is this type of collaborative approach that makes our mining sector a Canadian leader in exploration, development, and responsible and sustainable exploration. The Minister stated that this framework agreement was just one of many ways we are moving forward on the ring of fire. Mr. Speaker, through you to the minister, how is our government moving forward on this nationally significant project? Good question. Good, minister. Well, thank you again for the question. I very much appreciate the description that this is a nationally significant project, because project, that's exactly what this uh, multi-generational project is. And uh, to make sure that everybody in the House knows, everyone else knows, our, we are leading the creation of a development corporation 
generation to move the infrastructure process forward. We've often said, the Premier has said, we're moving on a parallel path. The First Nation uh, negotiation process was absolutely vital, and we made a great step forward last week. But certainly, we've begun real discussions with uh, several of the key partners as we move forward with uh, the important process. We've retained Deloitte, an experienced uh, company related to governance issues, uh, and we are very keen to continue to move forward on that aspect of the development of the project as well. What I want to do today, though, is that once again call on the federal government to partner with us yes, through our development corporation to develop vital infrastructure for this region. Uh, they've invested in many other nationally significant projects Thank in you. Uh, Newfoundland, British Columbia, and Alberta. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your question, the member from McKee and Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Yesterday, the government House leader admitted that Peter Fast worked for the Ontario Liberal Caucus at one point and for the Ontario Liberal Party under your leadership until Sunday. Given the severity of the OPP allegations involving Mr. Fast during the time he worked for her party and surrounding the deletion of emails and wiping hard drives in the Premier's office, can the Premier, as Liberal leader, tell this House if Mr. Fast had undergone a security clearance before he accessed sensitive files either for her party or for the Premier's office. Thank you, Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I just, I just want to repeat for the, uh, the member opposite that um, we learned about the allegations on Thursday about the former Chief of Staff of the former Premier. So the individual about whom she's speaking uh, was not uh, the subject of these allegations, but uh, following the revelations about the connections and internal investigations was conducted, and it was determined, as I have said, that uh, this particular from company did some order. work previously uh, for the caucus, for the caucus uh, office under the former premier. That ended in January 2013. There was some service provided by the company to the party office until Sunday, uh, because having uh, having determined that this person still was doing some work, we uh, we terminated that service on Sunday, Mr. Speaker, yes, and as as I said, um, we made that decision as soon as we uh, determined that he was providing services. Thank you. Supplementary. Well, this is a reasonable question Ontarians and I'm sure Liberal Party members would want to know. We know that Mr. Face has refused to speak with the OPP over the $1.1 billion gas plant scandal. We know we're having a very difficult time reaching him to come into the Justice Committee, and we'll deal with the Speaker's warrant if the time comes. Um, given the nature of this scandal and the OPP revelations, and given Mr. Fast's alleged role as an employee of the Liberal Party of Ontario, I ask you again, as leader of the Liberal Party, who had this individual under your employment up until Sunday, did he or did he not undergo a security clearance to deal with these sensitive files, either through the Legislative Assembly or through your party? Thank you. Well, again, Mr. Speaker, as I, as I have said, this was work that was done for the caucus office under the former Premier, Mr. Speaker, and uh, the allegations that, uh, that came to light on Thursday were allegations against the former Premier's former Chief of Staff. Um, you know, I would say to the uh, member opposite, the committee which we, whose scope we opened up, Mr. Speaker, the process which we initiated uh, in order to get uh, information into the uh, the public realm, Mr. Speaker, uh, will continue to do its work, and uh, I, you know, I know that the committee will uh, continue to call people to speak to it. And I, that is as it should be. That is exactly when I came into this office. That is exactly what I said should happen, Mr. Speaker. So we're going to let that process unfold, and uh, we'll leave it to the committee to uh, to call the people who they choose to call. Thank you. New question, the member from Toronto, Vancouver. Thank you, Speaker. Again, to the Premier. Can the Premier tell Ontarians? if she discussed the gas plant cover-up with her cabinet secretary and what the secretary told her. Uh, I would want uh, the member to withdraw that comment. I, I will withdraw. Carry on. Can the Premier tell Ontarians if she discussed the gas plant matter and uh, <laughs> records with her cabinet secretary and what the secretary told her? Premier. Speaker, well, the, uh, the member opposite knows full well that I have 
been before the committee twice. I have answered all the questions about what I know about this matter, Mr. Speaker. I have repeated it over and over again, Mr. Speaker. He can check Hansard. He can look at the records from uh, the committee, Mr. Speaker. I have been very clear about my involvement, which really, Mr. Speaker, was very limited. What is, what is critical, Mr. Speaker, is that he understand and that the people of Ontario understand that I have taken responsibility, Mr. Speaker. I have said that there were decisions made that should have been different. I have said that there were processes that needed to be changed, and we have changed those processes. We have put new rules in place about document re uh, retention, Mr. Speaker. We have trained all of our staff. We have uh, working with the Minister of Energy, put new rules in place about siting infrastructure, energy infrastructure. Those those are the actions that we have taken in addition to opening up the process around these Thank questions. You. There are a lot of words there, Speaker, but no answer. Does the Premier expect Ontarians to believe that the head of the Ontario Public Service, a gentleman who told police that he was uncomfortable with the goings-on in the Liberal Premier's office, never once talked to the Premier about the destruction of emails that happened during February and March of 2013. Wow. Mr. Speaker, the, again, the member opposite is talking about actions that took place before I was the yeah. Premier, Mr. Speaker. As soon as I became the Premier, Mr. Speaker, we worked to open up the process and change the rules. The, the fact is, Mr. Speaker, that the allegations that have come forward in the last few days have been about the former Former Premier's Office, uh, former Premier's uh, Chief of Staff, Mr. Speaker, and indeed, I have had many conversations with the Secretary of Cabinet about how to change the rules and make sure and to make sure that the uh, the document retention rules and the training was put in place, Mr. Speaker. We have had conversations with the uh, uh, the Privacy Commissioner in Answer. order to the put the Stormont, right Dundas framework in place. Glenn, That's we what we have done, Mr. Order. Speaker, and we will continue to cooperate with whomever Thank has you. more questions of. Us, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Labour. Before posing the question, Speaker, I'd also just like to thank the Premier for advanced manufacturing announcement in my own riding of Etobicoke North just an hour ago. Wow. Speaker, the inaugural question to our new Minister of Labour. It has been said that how a society deals with its youth will determine its prosperity. And of course, our investments include things like full-day kindergarten all the way up to world-class schooling, something that's, of course, valued by my own residents in Etobicoke North. But for many young folks, it's still a difficult uh, challenge for them to acquire positions and placements in internships. Our Youth Employment Fund has, in fact, helped 9,800 young people find meaningful employment, which is, of course, commendable. Yet internships, there's still a lot of uh, issues associated with question. that. So my question is, what are we doing to ensure that young people in my community who start a new job will be paid for the work that they do? Thank you. Minister of Labour. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the fine member from Etobicoke North for that very timely question. We all know that building a strong workforce is also about building safe workforce, yeah. workplaces and fair workplaces. In, in Ontario, Speaker, the rules on internships are very, very clear. It doesn't matter what your job title is, what your position is. If you perform work for someone, you're covered by the Employment Standards Act and you deserve to be paid the minimum wage. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a narrow exemption for co-op students, Speaker, for trainees and for the self-employed. The ministry has been extremely active on this issue to try and get the word out to others. We've reached out to post-secondary institutions, employers and job sites Answer. to make sure there's no confusion. We've also updated our webpage, done a lot of work on social media to make sure that everybody in Ontario understands the rules on internships. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Minister Flynn, for your first answer as our newly uh, minted Minister of Labour. I know that uh, the Labour Ministry will be uh, under good stewardship under your watch. I appreciate, uh, first of all, you're outlining the strong rules uh, for internships here in Ontario. My own constituents uh, value 
this uh, as we're reaching out to young people, businesses and institutions. But I still hear from folks in my own riding that the Ministry of Labour, though it's there to help them, sometimes they have a challenge to reach out to them. Uh, we've also seen, as you know very well, issues within the publication industry and the press with regard to unpaid internships. So my question is, Minister, how is the Ministry exercising oversight and making sure that these youth are protected? Merci, Thank Mr. You. Minister. Thank you. Minister. Thank you, Speaker. And once again, I'd like to thank the fine member from Etobicoke North for the thoughtful question. I can assure the members that the government's working very hard to ensure that our youth rights are protected. Yeah, yeah. We're the very first government to conduct proactive inspections, and while they're out in the field, the enforcement officers specifically ask about internships. We've invested an additional $3 million per year wow. for this proactive enforcement. Wow. We're making sure that more businesses are inspected and more workers' rights are protected. This spring, we'll be conducting a blitz that's going to look directly at this issue. Any concerns regarding arrangements can be referred to the Ministry of Labour's hotline. It's 1 800 531 5551. Confidential help is available, speaker, in 23 languages. Wow. We'll review any and all complaints Answer. to enforce these rules. So, speaker, we're working very hard to ensure that Ontario's youth have a solid and Thank a very you. safe start to their yeah, work life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your question, the member from Cambridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Premier, you seem to have your dates a little crossed up, so I want to lay this out for you. You met with the leader of the official opposition on January 28, 2013, and asked him to stop pursuing the truth about the $1.1 billion gas plant scandal. Then on February 7th, you wrote to the Auditor General to ask him to expand the probe on the gas plant scandal to include the Oakville power plant. But between that time, the OPP says Peter Faist was in the Premier's office purging documents off computers. How can you be responsible for taking meetings on the gas plant scandal by asking the Auditor General to further probe the gas plant scandal, but be completely removed from the Deputy Chief of Staff's IT-savvy boyfriend destroying files on the gas plant scandal. Premier, you're ministerially responsible for Question. that office. Why don't you explain yeah. something? Yeah. Well, you know, Mr. Speaker, uh, let, let me just say this, that uh, I came into this office uh, knowing that there was, uh, there was a need for an opening up of a process around the relocation of the gas plants. I knew that, Mr. Speaker. It was discussed during the leadership race. We talked about it, and we knew that there was going to need to be a different process whereby information could be brought into the public, Mr. Speaker. And so I absolutely came into this office and wanted to do everything that I could to make sure that there was the opportunity for the public for the members of the opposition, but for the public also, Mr. Speaker, more importantly, to have the information that was needed. We opened up the process. I said I was going to do that, and that's what we've done. Answer. Thank you. Supplementary. Premier, the best defence is a good offence, but your house of cards falls to pieces when you can no longer muzzle the people around you. You tried to muzzle the member from Nipissing after you redacted the wrong documents in the Estimates Committee. You're trying to, to muzzle the Leader of the Opposition and the member from Nipissing and Carleton to change the channel on your $1.1 billion gas plant scandal. The problem is, Premier, that no one takes you seriously. Premier, you can't even muzzle your own government bureaucrats and prevent them from leaking out your class political spending plans. How can you call yourself? an open, honest, and transparent government when you refuse to answer questions and can't go a day without dragging honourable members of this legislature through the mud. Yeah. Premier, it doesn't get much lower than that. You should apologize to the people of Ontario for your smear campaign. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I will debate uh, I will debate issues that uh, have a basis in truth, that are honest, Mr. Speaker, that have evidence to support them. I will debate those any day, Mr. Speaker, which is why I said that when I came into this office, it was very important to me that we open up the process and we, we uh, provide any answers to questions that were put forward, Mr. Speaker, and that we broaden the scope of the committee so that those answers could be brought forward, Mr. Speaker. And in terms of, uh, in terms in terms of our budget, I'm happy to talk with the member opposite about our plan for the budget, Mr. Speaker. 
I'm happy to talk about how important it is, I believe, that we invest in the people of this province and not cut their programs, not cut their health care, not cut their education, and not undermine labour in this province, Mr. Speaker. I'll debate that with you any day. New question, the member from Brown Valley Gore Malton. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Stop the clock. New question, the member from Brown Valley Gore Malton. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. People throughout the OPS and senior Liberal ranks told the police that they knew that computers in the Premier's office had been tampered with, mm -hmm. but the Premier claims that she had no idea. When did she Mr. first the learn come to order, that computers in the Premier's office had been wiped and emails deleted? All thank you. Premier? Mr. Speaker, there were allegations that came forward on Thursday about the former premier's chief of staff the former premier's chief of staff mr speaker the former, from the former East, Stony premier's Creek, chief of order. staff never worked for me mr speaker he was never in my office he was never part of my staff so let me just repeat the allegations that came forward on thursday were about the former Premier's Chief of Staff, Mr. Speaker. That person has never worked for me and was never in my office. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Let me clarify some dates. The OPP court document says they believe, and I quote, they believe David Livingston committed the offence of breach of trust by allowing Peter Faist to access 24 computers in the Premier's office between the 6th of February and the 20th of March, 2013. Did Peter face erase computers while the Premier was in office? Again, Mr. Speaker, let me just be clear. Again, the allegations are uh, about the former Premier's Chief of Staff. The individual, the other individual that the member opposite is named, Mr. Speaker, is someone who did provide service to the Liberal Caucus office up until January 2013. I became the Premier in this office February 11th, Mr. Speaker, and so he no longer was providing services to the Liberal Caucus. Uh, he was providing, that individual was providing some services to the Liberal Party when these allegations against the former Premier's Chief of Staff came to light. We did an internal investigation, determined that this person was still providing some service to the Liberal Party, not in my office, but to the Liberal Party, and we terminated those services, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Your question, the member from Vaughan. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, my question today is for the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport. Speaker, according to Tourism Toronto, last year we welcomed the largest number of overseas visitors on record. This is great news for Toronto, and I can certainly see why tourists would want to visit the entire region. There are many attractions to enjoy, including the Art Gallery of Ontario, the Royal Ontario Museum, and Ripley's brand new aquarium, which opened this fall with tremendous success. And as the member from Vaughan, Speaker, I'm also very proud to have wonderful attractions in my community like Legoland, the McMichael Art Gallery, and Canada's Wonderland, right within driving distance of Toronto. Speaker, can the minister please inform the House regarding how we are working as a government to stimulate even more investment for Ontario's tourism industry? Thank you, Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport. Thank you, thank you, Speaker, and thank you for the question. Speaker, the weather is warmer. Absolutely. The daylight is longer. I'm very pleased to rise today to talk about tourism. Speaker, our government understands the important role that the tourism sector plays in building strong economy and creating jobs. As a matter of fact, Speaker, it creates hundreds of thousands of jobs and generates billion dollars to our economy. Our tourism attractions stimulate local economies and help make Ontario a premier tourism destination. Speaker, this is why my ministry supports investment projects by the private sector throughout the planning and development phases. The member is right. We invested in a new Ripley Aquarium, 
of Canada in Toronto that will attract an estimate Answer. 2 million visitors in this first year of operation. That's great for Ontario. Thank you, Speaker. Two supplementary. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the minister for his response and for the outstanding job that he's doing for the people of Ontario. As he mentioned, the tourism sector is a key component of Toronto's cultural and recreational fabric, but it's also, Speaker, responsible for generating jobs and revenue for the province. The tourism sector generates billions of dollars for Ontario's economy and supports over 300,000 jobs. It was also, and importantly, the single largest employer of young people in the province. Supporting tourism has truly helped to raise the profile of Ontario as a world-class destination, making it a great place for international visitors to invest. Speaker, can the minister please update the House regarding what actions are being taken to ensure that tourism remains an essential part of Ontario's economy? Thank you, Minister. Thank you, thank you, Speaker. Definitely, tourism is an essential part of the province's economic development and investment attraction strategy. Speaker, my ministry continues to implement our tourism investment strategy launched in November 2012 that aims to raise the profile of Ontario as a place to invest. Here are some examples of the projects that we are working to support. Speaker, the Fort Erie Canadian Motor Speedway, which recently programmed, Skylight Developments, Georgian Wally Project, and the Triple Properties Proposed Durham Light Project in Pickering. In addition, Speaker, to our own investment attraction effort, my ministry is also working closely with the Ministry of Economic Development, Trade and Employment to yes, leverage sir. their significant investment attraction as well. Thank you, Speaker. Your question, the for Thank you very Pickering. much, uh, Mr. Speaker. My question is uh, also for the Premier. Premier, when the province's top bureaucrat, Peter Wallace, was before the Justice Committee last June, he gave testimony that, in hindsight, is quite shocking. To paraphrase Mr. Wallace, he said that in the midst of a scandal that paralyzed your government, with the Minister of Energy facing contempt charges, with the former Premier having been chased from office, and after years of questions about missing emails from the office of the Premier, then, as the incoming Premier, you apparently asked no questions about the retention of email records, and neither did any of your staff. Mr. Wallace testified that conversations about document destruction in the Premier's office would take place on a political-to-political -political level. So tell us, Premier, Question. why did you and your staff fail to ask routine questions of the outgoing staff? Is it because you already knew the answer and you just wanted to appear Thank to you. be ignorant when the police came knocking? <laughs> Oh, Mr. Speaker, as, as I have said, I knew when I came into this office that we needed to change the process around the relocation of the gas plants. I, I was aware of that. It was, part of my, uh, it was part of my platform when I came in as the Premier, Mr. Speaker. And so in those early days, what I was working on, Mr. Speaker, was how we were going to open up the process, how we were going to make sure that all the questions that the, uh, that the opposition and that the, the public wanted answers to would be, would be answered, Mr. Speaker. That's the work that we did in those early days. That's why the process got opened up, Mr. Speaker. That's why there's as much information as uh, as there is in the public realm, Mr. Speaker. And I, you know, I am glad that we have had the opportunity to provide the opp provide the opportunity for the committee to do its work. It continues to do its work, and Mr. Answer. Speaker, that's as it should be. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you. Back to the Premier. Premier, this comes down to your credibility, and your claims of ignorance are no longer believable. We know from sworn testimony from the head of the public service that your staff made no inquiries about email records that were the subject of substantial interest in this legislature and elsewhere. What we don't know is what conversations took place between political staff in the outgoing Premier's office and your office about the work Peter Face performed on behalf of the Ontario Liberal Party. You're implying here today that your staff is fundamentally incompetent and that some conspiracy of silence exists in your office where no one asks the inconvenient question. What is your defence? Enough is enough. Is it not finally time to let the people of Ontario pass judgment on your sorry record? Thank you, Premier. 
to me that for the last year there have been many difficult questions that have been asked and answered, Mr. Speaker, and we have shied away from none of those. We have answered the questions, we have provided documentation, and most importantly, Mr. Speaker, we have acknowledged that there needed to be changes. We have changed the rules and the protocols around retention of information. We have changed the rules and the structures around locating gas plants and energy infrastructure, Mr. Speaker. We have acknowledged that communities need to be more involved and they need to have more buy-in, and that is what is happening. So we came in, I came into this office understanding there needed to be changes, Mr. Speaker. We have moved ahead and we have made those changes. Thank you. New question. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Has the Premier or any member of her caucus or staff been investigated by the OPP? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I, I, you know, I know that the, uh, that the member opposite understands that there's an OPP investigation going on, and we need to let that, we need to let that unfold, Mr. Speaker. I think, what, I think what is really critical is that we talk about how do we, how do we make sure that, that we have the right rules in place, that we have had the right process. And I, I would suggest, Mr. Speaker, that I came into this office and I knew that we needed to open up the committee process so that there could be uh, a more complete a more complete discussion of the issues, which is why there have been hundreds of thousands of documents, Mr. Speaker. Dozens of people who have come forward have come to the committee and answered questions, including myself, Mr. Speaker, and the former Premier. And the committee continues to do its work. The OPP is doing its investigation, Mr. Speaker, and the committee is continuing to, uh, to ask questions and, to, pro and to provide information for the public. That's as it should be, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary. Well, Mr. Speaker, my question was whether anyone has been investigated, has anyone been interviewed? Uh, I didn't really hear an answer to that. I heard a lot of spinning. We're learning from former staff that they're refusing to be interviewed by the OPP. Will the Premier state now that she believes that Liberals, both past staff and present staff, should be offering their full cooperation to the OPP as they conduct their investigation? Government House Leader. Government House Leader. Uh, Mr. Speaker, why will the opposition not deal with facts? The facts, Mr. Speaker, were outlined in a voluminous document that was released by the courts last week. And Mr. Speaker, if he wants to know the names of some of the individuals Bruce that were interviewed in there, we'll I believe the member from Nipissing was interviewed by the police and the member from Cambridge was interviewed by the police. But the fact of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, what this document concluded is that there were allegations, serious allegations against one individual, the former chief of staff of the Premier. This document asked for permission to grant, get a warrant to continue the investigation to see if there are any basis for those allegations. Yes, Mr. Speaker, I would think it would be prudent for all members of this legislature to allow the OPP to do their work and to deal with the facts as outlined in this court document. Thank you. New Question. The member from Mississauga Streetsville. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Ma question. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister to Fr Francophone Affairs. Uh, it's been a few weeks now that the University of Guelph announced the closing of the Alfred campus. The Ministry of Training, Colleges and University informed us after which that the Boreal College and Cité signed a, an agreement in principle to maintain agricultural uh, training in the region. We are proud of our government uh, that was able to find a solution as quickly as they did. The minister could uh, could she could the minister tell uh, the chamber what was done for the francophone community thank you mr speaker last saturday i was at brockland for the francophonie gala of prescott russell and everyone wanted to thank me thank our government and the, de and the member for Glendary Prescott Russell for the extraordinary work that was done in order to keep the Francophone Alfred College open. Alfred 
was the first French-speaking college in Ontario and participants to this event, to the gala last week, wanted to thank me uh, because Alfred College will remain a French-speaking college managed by a French-speaking faculty and staff. Right now, there is a committee um, looking into a transition program with Boreal College, Cité, Ministry, uh, and the Union of Farmers who, that will uh, ensure the perennity uh, of the college. Thank you. Madam Minister, I see the importance of post-secondary uh, education in the creation of a strong francophone identity uh, for the community in Ontario. I meet people myself, uh, young people in my writing, who wanted to continue their education in French, and I'm proud to let them know about our action plan to improve French uh, francophone access to education in the uh, center south southwest uh, region. And I know that many of our post-secondary institutions um, uh, have many tools at their disposal by, and they, by asking a designation under the uh, French Services Act to make sure uh, that their courses, their train, French language training, uh, courses um, be insured. Can the minister talk to us a bit more about this? Thank you for this uh, important uh, ish question. Yes, we're always uh, proud to say that our young francophones can study from kindergarten to university in French. There are requests for designation under the French Language Act. Uh, Hearst University, Boreal, La Cité are all a designated institution, and we are studying a request by uh, Université de Rossi and Université d'Ottawa. But uh, the Alf Alfred College w wishes to have the designation to ensure uh, that it will stay alive, because under the previous government, the uh, college was threatened many times uh, of closures. Um, so the designation will ensure uh, the perennity of the college. Thank you for my colleague uh, from uh, the writing for his work on, on this file. Thank you, uh, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Premier, once again, you've been caught telling a story that just doesn't add up, and Ontarians are seeing right through it. You told us Peter Faist wasn't in your office, but you and your Liberal Party had a contract with him until he became politically inconvenient. More than 80 witnesses, many of them Liberals, including you, have come before the gas plant hearings, but it took the threat of jail door slamming for Laura Ramey to cop what was, what was really going on in the Premier's office. Now you're using a lawyer to make arguments that you can't make for yourself because you've lost the moral authority to lead and no one believes you. Premier, you continue to talk about these safe hands, but according to the OPP, the only Liberal safe hands are those in handcuffs. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I will just repeat what I have already said a couple of times today. The individual that the uh, member opposite is talking about is someone who uh, who worked and did some service for did some work for the uh, caucus office uh, uh, before I was the premier, Mr. Speaker, up until January 2013. Uh, continued to do some uh, work with the Liberal Party, Mr. Speaker, and uh, that work was terminated on Sunday. That's the reality, Mr. Speaker. We have a deferred vote on the motion for allocation of time on Bill 122, an act respecting collective bargaining in Ontario school system. Call on the members. This will be a five-minute bill.
Would all members take their seats, please? All members take their seats, please. Thank you. Mr. Malloy has moved government notice of motion number 43. All those in favour stand raise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Malloy. Mr. Malloy. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Shirelli. Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor. Mr. Sousa. Mr. Sousa. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Matthews. Ms. Matthews. Mr. Nackby. Mr. Nackby. Ms. Sandals. Ms. Sandals. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins. Ms. McCharles. Ms. McCharles. Mr. Quinter. Mr. Quinter. Mr. Takar. Mr. Takar. Mr. Baradnetti. Mr. Baradnetti. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Ms. Cansfield. Ms. Cansfield. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Duggan. Mr. Duggan. Mr. Gravel. Mr. Gravel. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. Chan. Mr. Chan. Ms. Peruzza. Ms. Peruzza. Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Leal. Mr. Leal. Mr. Garrett. Mr. Garrett. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. McNeely. Mr. McNeely. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Quadri. Ms. Albanese. Ms. Albanese. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Balkison. Mr. Balkison. Mr. Dixon. Mr. Dixon. Ms. Jassin. Ms. Jassin. Ms. Manga. Ms. Manga. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Mr. Del Duca. Mr. Del Duca. Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong. Ms. Damerler. Ms. Damerler. Mr. Crack. Mr. Crack. All those opposed, please rise one at a time. Be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Leone. Mr. Leone. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Arnott. Mr. Arnott. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Miss Elliott. Mrs. Elliott. Mr. Hudak. Mr. Hudak. Mr. Yakabasi. Mr. Yakabasi. Mr. McLeod. Mr. McLeod. Mr. Miller Perry Samuskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Samuskoka. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mr. McNaughton. Mr. McNaughton. Mr. Dunlop. Dunlop. Mr. Dunlop. Mr. Holliday. Mr. Holliday. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Ms. Monroe. Ms. Monroe. Mr. Chudley. Mr. Chudley. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. O'Toole. Mr. O'Toole. Mr. Willett. Mr. Willett. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson. Ms. Smith. Mr. Mr. Smith. Smith. Mr. Harris. Harris. Mr. Harris. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Urich. Mr. Urich. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Mr. Ms. McKenna. Ms. McKenna. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Pettipe. Mr. Pettipe. Mr. Milligan. Mr. Milligan. Mr. McLaren. Mr. McLaren. Ms. Marto. Ms. Marto. What about the NDP? Being 43 and the nays being 36, I declare the motion carried. The Minister of Finance on a point of order. Of order on April Fool's Day, I'm hoping the opposition will accept the pay freeze by the following. I seek unanimous consent that the question on the motion of the second reading of Bill 177, an act to amend the Legislative Assembly Act, be immediately put without further debate or amendment. And that the bill be ordered for third reading, and that the order of the third reading of Bill 177 be immediately called, and that the question on the motion for third reading of the bill be put without debate or amendment. Yeah, good idea. The Minister of Finance is seeking unanimous consent to the question on the motion. I'm getting through this before you say that. The Minister of Finance consent, uh, con uh, is seeking unanimous consent that the question on the motion the second reading of Bill 177, an act to amend the Legislative Assembly Act, be immediately put without further debate or amendment, and that the bill be ordered for third reading, and that the order of the third reading of Bill 177 be immediately called, and that the question on the, the motion for third reading on the bill be put without debate or amendment. Do we agree? Yeah. I heard a no. There are no. Uh, the, the, 
The member, the member from Simcoe Gray on a point of order. Yes, Mr. Speaker, I seek unanimous consent that the sponsorship of Bill 5, an act to freeze compensation for two years in the public sector, be transferred to the member for Nipissing, Mr. Speaker, so that we all freeze our pay across the public sector. Simcoe Gray is seeking unanimous consent that the sponsorship of Bill 5. Uh, uh, the member from Simcoe Gray is seeking unanimous consent the sponsorship of Bill 5, an act of freeze compensation for two years. Would the member from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke is now warned? I seek unanimous. Uh, the, the member from Simcoe Gray is seeking unanimous consent for the sponsorship of Bill 5, an act of freeze compensation for two years in the public sector, be transferred to the member of Nipissing. Do we agree? Yes. I heard a no. There are no deferred votes. This House stands recess until 3 p.m. this afternoon. <coughs>